Okay, very well, welcome to our talk today. Uh, last time I checked the channel one, and there was more than 300 uh, attendees. So yeah, it's huge. Thank you for this opportunity to talk. Um, this talk is about ABAP file formats. And me, I'm Albert. I'm with SAP for two years now. Um, Lars, um, was, we've already been introduced, so super happy and uh, yeah, that you are with me and that we can share our recent work here in this talk. Um, the disclaimer for today is, yeah, everything we show is subject to change, so don't build your business uh, out of it. And as many of the things we show today are open source, just keep in mind they are also licensed, just doesn't, yeah, there are licensed behind it, so respect them. And yeah, that's it for the stage setting. Now, um, before we talk about file formats, I just wanted to um, look on the history of sharing ABAP code. So, and when I say sharing ABAP code, I don't mean sharing through SAP owned tooling like the change and transport system or anything like that, just sharing between you and me. So basically it's about the files that we are sharing. And I'm two years with uh, SAP and with ABAP, so I don't know that much about history, but I did some homework, talked to people, and they told me at around 2006, there was SAP link or now maybe I should say it is still there. I found a GitHub repository, so that was a tool for sharing ABAP code. Mm, then with the merge of Git, was just a matter of time and we saw our first um, Git client in the ABAP world. So it was around 2014 when ABAP Git was launched. And two quotes here, um, ABAP Git says about ABAP Git that it is a Git client for the ABAP development written in ABAP. And SAP says, well, with ABAP Git, you can export ABAP objects from any system to another. Um, just one quick remark from my side. Um, if you are familiar with um, Git clients outside the ABAP world, um, yeah, don't expect everything you love and know from your preferred Git client to be available in, in the ABAP world. This Git client is tailored to the needs of ABAP development and might look like different, but at the end, it's a Git repository. So you have this Git thing uh, available. Um, now, what do they actually share? Um, I had a look on these files that have been generated with the SAP link. And then uh, there was ABAP code was put into XML files. And so it was, yeah, it was a possibility to um, share code, but it was not super good for readability. And we will, and with ABAP Git, we'll show some examples later in the presentation, but it's also, yeah, XML based, right? And yeah, that's about history. Now uh, I want to present the ABAP file formats, might be a natural successor of the file formats out there. And it provides a file format definition for the ABAP repository objects. So, so far so general. Um, let us continue with the ABAP file formats and it's a public definition of the file format. So you have your ABAP system, you have your files, and the ABAP file format tells you how those files look like for a certain object. Um, focus is on human readability. It's also on completeness, and we tend or we we intend to have no redundancy. And um, if you think of it, human readability might relate to code review capabilities. Completeness um, for reusing, for collaborating. So it's enough to have file. You can create your ABAP up, up objects out of them. And yeah, the redundancy part, yeah, we don't like to have redundant information. So just an improvement on this side. Um, personal note on this, I think it's super important that there is a platform where we can talk and share our thoughts about the file format and that we put it aside from the tool that creates it. So that's a, like a open platform. And you see later on the slides, we will have the links to the ABAP file format 
GitHub repository where you can interact and put your information or ask anything you like. Mm, how does it look like? Mm, ABAP file format is based around JSON. Um, I'm now two years with SAP. I saw a lot of different objects. They have different requirements for file format. So some have um, translations, others have text elements. When I think in simple transformations, there are XML data. So might be different files included in one file format. But what ABAP file format specifies and guarantees is that there's exactly one file that is named after the object name, object type dot JSON. So this is no matter which object type you're dealing with, this is the file you always get. And as it is JSON, we also provide a JSON schema that's nice for annotation and validation. So you can upfront show, uh, ensure yourself that this data you get is valid and you can edit it and profit uh, benefit from the annotation. Mm, now, I want to show you some examples, real world examples. Um, the first one is a form based object, and the second one is the interface, like the source based object type. Um, to start with the body enhancement spot, um, I put the picture of the typical ADT view of this object. This is form based. You see here on the details page that there's a name, description, and interface some checkboxes. And on the right-hand side, I put the file format. On the root level of this JSON data, you see here one format version. You see the header. Header is what you see on the properties view in ADT. And you have also this body definition. And that's the part where it's getting interested or it's object specific. You see the name, description, interface, and you find these JSON data attributes also on the UI. So it's quite close to what you get from UI. It might not be close to what you actually read on the database. So we provided abstraction or we aim for abstraction of the technical naming here. <clears throat> and some words about file names and formatting. So typically the object type is quite important for this file format. And about the formatting, it's all about that we that two people can share their code and if the ABAP data is the same, then the file should be the same. So we ensure this by uh, defining a UTF-8 style and the end of line and end of file marker like you should be or you used from Linux development or from POSIX standards. So this line feed and empty line at the end of a file. That's all that we can interchange or we can change our code and don't get diffs where there is actually no difference in the file. Now, let's come to the ABAP interface. This is a source-based object. So we have two parts of file format. The one is the ABAP source that we, we won't look in detail because it's what you see in ADT or it's just the source formatted as stated before. And there's this meta file. I call it now meta file. It's the JSON data we talked before. So let's have a look on this metadata file. I will show the ABAP file format data file. I will show it for, from the perspective of ABAP Git and also GCTS. So we get a clue or we can compare what we are actually specifying with um, ABAP file formats. And I think we can also see what is meant with this human readability, completeness, and redundancy. So for a simple interface, the ABAP file format specifies this metadata file, this JSON file. And as, as simple as that, it's the format version of this file format and is the content of the property view. So the description and the language. There's no user last changed on, last changed by. This the redundant part that's all cut out and it's like it is. And now there's in VS Code extension where it's 
that, that provides the validation and annotation through JSON schema. Now, let's have a look how this uh, file looks on ABAPGIT. Mm, as I told you before, it's XML based, so a lot of XML things around the actual data. And then you see here the file name and similar information. Um, here we come to our redundancy part. This file and name encodes already the object name. So this is kind of redundant at that state. That's mainly where ABAP file format and ABAP git differs. And then let's have a look on this GCTS file. So from my understanding, this GCTS file is kind of the database entries represented as JSON data. So you might know these CO class text, CO class definition database where you have the entries of the interface. So the text has the description and language. And on the definition part, you see here kind of the same information you get from the other git, so version exposure category, but also the author. So when sharing code, maybe it's not necessary to share the author. That's one aspect here as well. So this comparison concludes with the examples. And now let's come to more or less the division the one file format. So, so before joining SAP, I was with C++ development and I never thought about file formats. Now I'm here. I have some objects that are represented in form-based fashion. So it's not easy to get a history out of what happened to the object before, when it has been changed, what has been changed. Mm, this might change with the ABAP file format because as you see here, you can go to the history view, select different versions of your object and compare them. And by comparing means we don't compare UIs, we compare the object as file format. So it's the JSON based ABAP file format here. By the way, this object type is the ATC check variant for Steampunk. So quite more or less one of the newer objects here. On the other part of the slide, you see here the equivalent object in ABAP Git. As it is a new object type, this object handle in ABAP Git, the serializers there are already adopting the ABAP file format. So no matter which tooling you use, is one file format. So it doesn't matter if you're developing an ADT and want to compare versioning or you want to develop in a Git-based fashion with ABAP Git, it's the same file format, just as it maybe is intuitive. And one note on the Steampunk um, Eclipse plugin ABAP Git, it works as well for these object types. So now, what's about the availability of these object types? There are we. Um, ABAP file format specifi specifies about 25 object types, numbers constantly growing. We have more than 20 different contributors, so it's really a community effort here. Please note that um, it, with SAP bases 756 and newer, we already provide some serializers. So you can look on the code, it's out there. And on the other bit, side um, we implemented over the last year the interface object type that now is above file format compatible it's behind experimental flag so it's not as default you have to switch the flag and enable it its development was based heavily on a json for getting the json data into the ABAP system and also out and on the newer object types, there's these ATC check variants I showed in the slide before, but also wrap business events, bindings, and a lot of new objects that have been shipped with ABAP Git Steampunk. Uh, ABAP Steampunk. And on from the ABAP Git side, Lars will tell in the second part of this presentation a lot, but for this slide, um, ABAP Git focus, whenever there's a new object type, uh, focuses on ABAP file format. So with that being said, it's an ABAP conference talk. So there's a breakpoint. Hand over to Lars.
unmuted. Ruby. So let's just go back and see if the screen is shared. So yeah, don't go anywhere. This of course is a normal uh, breakpoint. So we'll continue directly into some code with, uh, with F5 on the keyboard, right? So um, Albert showed um, uh, the interface and mentioned that there is a JSON schema defining the, uh, the formats of this uh, ABAP file uh, format. But how do we define JSON schema? So I think no humans should ever be um, required to write JSON schema. So we should actually write the definition of the file format in a different language, right? And what languages are there in the world that are very important and dear to us? Of course, there is ABAP, right? So the ABAP file formats uh, are defined in ABAP, which then becomes the JSON schema. So this here that we see is the um, uh, definition of an, the interface object. All objects defined in ABAP file formats are defined as interfaces. So it actually turns out that it is possible to map um, ABAP uh, type system into JSON. So taking something like the uh, category here that is uh, num c length two, it actually maps into JSON as a string, but given an extra annotation in the JSON schema that is of max length two. Um, similarly, um, Albert showed the, uh, the header that refers to a different uh, data type where the description of the um, um, of the object is, and using uh, various uh, additions to ABAP doc that is invented just for this purpose and doesn't work anywhere else. This, uh, of course, is a free text, but when generating the ABAP file formats, multiple different uh, extra annotations in the ABAP doc is taken into account when generating the JSON schema. So this here is the code that uh, will have to be written to define the other file format. And again, I think this comes quite natural because the, the people defining the other file formats will know ABAP and perhaps not so much about JSON schema. So um, um, just go ahead and write the ABAP code. And this is actually the ABAP code that is shared on uh, uh, on GitHub uh, under the MIT license. So uh, today, if you have any good additions, uh, you can open the pull request and see if it's uh, approved. Um, there should be no, uh, no major typos or anything, but it follows the normal GitHub contribution uh, uh, process where anybody in the world can actually fork this project and suggest changes. And I think uh, there are some sessions uh, today talking about clean code um, and uh, static analysis. So of course, when or if somebody opens a pull request to the other file formats uh, repository, then it triggers static analysis directly in the pull request mm -hmm. so that um, something like the uh, uppercase and lowercase of keywords is enforced within the other file formats uh, repository to be consistent. So yeah, so it, it was actually where everything starts, write the um, uh, definition of the other objects in other. Next thing that happens is actually, we have the uh, type definitions in other, and then by running some other logic, then we actually get the JSON schemas. The other logic to take the type definitions in the interfaces, translate that into JSON schemas are also available in this uh, GitHub repository. So this is something that you can mostly install on your system and then run to generate the uh, corresponding schemas that, is, uh, that then uh, can be used by tooling to validate and do IntelliSense and so on. 
However, yeah, so running out of code um, nowadays uh, can be a challenge, right? Um, not everyone has access to an ABAP system. Not everyone uh, has access to the latest developer edition. So we want to keep this as easy as possible for um, all contributors. So anyone can press the edit file on GitHub. You just edit this file without access to uh, a, a system with SE80 or uh, the new, uh, new fancy editors like Eclipse, right? So just one click, and then you can actually change the ABAP code. And if there's a syntax error, you get the feedback directly in the, um, in the pull request. But yeah, anyhow, to actually generate the JSON schemas, you have to run some ABAP logic. And of course, we want, we'd like to get into a situation where the developer gets fast feedback, um, easy generation of the, um, of the JSON schemas. So, on longer term, the to be setup that we are aiming for is, uh, is something like this. So we have the ABAP logic, right, um, to generate the schemas. And we would like that to actually execute directly in the pull request when somebody uh, changes a file so that it's possible to see the resulting JSON schema exactly at the same time that uh, the uh, ABAP uh, definition has changed. So to do that, um, we have this quite of elaborate setup um, that works a bit like uh, the exorcism uh, setup that uh, we introduced last year, see the ABAP conference 2021. Taking the ABAP logic, automatically downporting the ABAP logic to 702 syntax. So now we have some ABAP code to generate the schemas in 702 syntax. Those files are then um, pushed to an OCI registry. OCI registries exist in a lot of um, organizations, but it's also free on GitHub. In this setup, we mainly just use it as a container for a zip file. Then when somebody changes the uh, type definitions in the pull request, we actually take the downboard ABAP code, transpile that to JavaScript, because the JavaScript can be generated uh, quite uh, quickly and also is easy and fast to generate on GitHub Actions. That way, we will have the JSON schemas generated from the ABAP code directly in the pull request within uh, less than uh, a minute. I think it's 30 seconds right now or something, something like that. So that way you don't even need to boot up an ABAP system as a contributor. You can just write your code in, uh, in GitHub and see exactly what happens, right? Yeah, talking about um, the JavaScript and so on. So of course we can, gen we can run the JavaScript code on GitHub Actions, but there are also other platforms that can easily um, execute JavaScript code. So like the browser, and actually these slides are in the browser. So let's just do a, a generation of the JSON schema. So um, let's open here and do a bit of zoomy zoom. So here on the left side of the browser, I have the uh, uh, definition of the, um, of the interface object in some code here. And on the right side, it has the um, generate JSON schema. And if I change something on the left side of the screen, so it could be this description, interface, we'll see that directly. That the generate JSON schema is updated more or less immediately. There's a bit of a of, the, of a delay of some milliseconds. So this is actually the ABAP code that takes the ABAP code to generate the JSON schema running in the browser as JavaScript. And as part of this generation, just take a moment to, um, to look at the actual the tool to generate it. It does a lot of RTTI, so uh, introspection of the code um, that is over here. It also reads the ABAP docs and it reads that from the code that is stored in the database. So actually in the browser here, it also runs a SQLite database so that the ABAP code generating the JSON schema from the ABAP code can read 
the uh, source file of this interface of the data that is in the database that is running here in the browser. Yeah, I think that that was sort of correct. <laughs> but again, this is also open source. We'll share the links um, uh, after the, uh, the session so that you can um, all check it out and read all the code. All here that we see is uh, open source. So um, um, just go and try it out and, and break it. There's probably a lot of bugs, but we hope that you will help fixing that, right? So talking a bit about ABAP Git. So as Albert mentioned, there's the experimental flag that you can enable to, um, to run the ABAP file, some of the ABAP file formats in ABAP Git today. The plan is to enable the ABAP file formats directly in ABAP Git when we don't lose information. Currently, there is an outstanding regarding translations and long texts. In ABAP Git, we have for many years been able to pull old formats and suggest the new format to be staged um, during the XML era, right? Lot of, lots of things keep changing. And this will be the same when moving to JSON. We'll read the old one and then suggest the new one. And we are still aiming to support 702 and up. The other Git migration from XML to JSON will take a long time. So we're planning to um, provide a uh, automatic, automated setup with zero manual intervention uh, that will actually open pull requests on GitHub, converting from the XML format to the new AFF format. Yeah, so that was a lot of stuff, right? Uh, and we have seen quite a lot of uh, different projects um, and a lot of people have actually been involved uh, in, uh, in this, making this, uh, this possible. So um, we'd like to thank all the contributors to ABAP Git, to ABAP file formats, inside SAP, outside SAP, or to the community, right? And also thank you to the organizers of, uh, of ABAPConf. Um, so just to show there's a lot of people behind this helping out uh, with uh, fixing bugs, fixing typos, uh, creating the documentation and all. Lots of links, you can uh, check those in the, um, in the slides that will be available online. And remember, ABAP is not dead, so we write a lot of ABAP code. And yeah, slides will be online. And I think uh, questions will be at the meet, meet the speaker session, but you can also find us on uh, Twitter and Slack and Discord and uh, stuff like that. Anything to add, Albert? No, 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 it's all right. Cool. And people are behaving in um, in the YouTube. Yeah, so we have ABAP serverless. Yeah, so check the session from uh, last year also on ABAP, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, so um, as I was uh, saying, I was uh, I'm, I'm working in uh, in, in uh, ABAP for the last uh, three years, and uh, I wanted to thank you guys for hosting this event. Um, I would like to dedicate this session to all the newcomers in ABAP, as I was uh, three years before. Um, I know you are uh, uh, you are facing struggles in understanding the, the concept. Um, there's a, a lot of hype in other languages and um, you know in, in the real world uh, there are systems which are old and uh, need support so you might uh, have come across with some old code uh, but i want to tell you that everyone has been in your position just uh, uh, persist and uh, try to learn anything you can even from the old code uh, if you ask many senior programmers they will tell you that uh, it helped them to read the old code because uh, they came to an understanding of uh, why the technology they use is, it is, is what it is. Um, so when I entered the SAP development world almost three years ago, even though I had several years of programming experience, I myself had doubts about the language. I had to admit that, and this is why I'm, um, I, I wanted to, to, to share this with you, because I have come to, to love the language, uh, which is ABAP. So um, when I entered um, SAP development, uh, uh, I, I was, uh, it was and still is my subject of work, so I wanted to be efficient. 
So I did my research and uh, found out that uh, even classic ABAP is still in demand and uh, will be for many years until the transition to ABAP cloud is complete. Um, as you can see, uh, SAP developers choose, choose mostly ABAP for their uh, projects. And uh, not only the developers choose ABAP because uh, the demand for them, for the ABAPers is huge. Uh, this is why uh, ABAPers unemployment rates are uh, very low. And um, SAP, of course, cannot simply abandon all solutions and uh, existing customers. So even the currently oldest offering, which is ECC, will be broadly available until 2027. And of course, in, uh, in SAP, they plan for the future. So they have hired more than a few new ABAPers to be trained and um, take part in the redesign of the, of the language. Um, other than that, uh, ABAP has a great community, of course, uh, as you can experience in this event. Um, this, this conference is a fine example of it. Uh, you will find plenty of solutions and resources in uh, SAP forums, uh, blogs, and uh, knowledge-based articles, and um, more than often in independent blogs, where even SAP sometimes, uh, more, than in a, more than often, uh, relies for answers. Uh, finally, SAP itself uh, wouldn't leave its uh, flagship all by itself. An example of uh, sub dedication to the language and the community behind it is the commitment of three developer advocates who are, who are focused in ABAP. Uh, Rich Heilman and uh, Thomas Young have uh, a lot of history with the language, uh, while Mamiki Kane focuses mostly on new features and uh, emerging developers, so they strongly support uh, our language. Um, okay. Enough uh, with uh, the theory and the, the introduction. Uh, let's dive into some uh, uh, ABAP features that uh, I have found interesting in my course. Um, ABAP has great features, and uh, once you decide to get uh, seriously involved, you can be creative and enjoy your work like many of us do. Um, okay, so uh, one of the first uh, features that caught my attention was uh, constructor expressions. Um, uh, with which you can uh, create, uh, you can be uh, very creative in uh, um, handling uh, handling data and, uh, and structures. Um, other than that, uh, uh, I have um, enjoyed working with a dynamic type and RTTS um, runtime uh, types and services. So. Uh, these are the main features that caught my, my attention and um, Get me seriously, got me seriously involved in ABAP and um, made, made me want to, to, to build even more and create even more. And um, I have uh, built some, you know, general utilities or, uh, uh, or, or some tools for, uh, for me to use in everyday, in everyday coding life. So let's, um, let me, the guys advised me to do this beforehand, but I forgot it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I believe that this is better now. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, we can see some um, Uh, we can see the use of uh, some constructors. We will see the use of some constructors here in, uh, in this program. Um, especially the use constructor is a, a very useful and very handy one. I will present to you some uh, functionalities that I have uh, come to, to know with, uh, with this constructor. But uh, of course, uh, all this, as, in, as, as many things in, uh, in ABAP, can be done in other ways, maybe more efficient. I just wanted to, to showcase the power of, uh, of the constructor. Um, you can use the reduce constructor to, to find uh, maximum values, uh, even if it is uh, an integer or uh, a packed number or even a date. Um, you have to be careful uh, on how you do it. Um, most times uh, uh, we use the, uh, the reduce constructor to, to to construct, to, 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 add, to add something, even if it is a calculation or even if it is a, a string, 
but you can also use it to compare and uh, hold in the iterate in the iteration variable the the last uh, comparison value which uh, meets our our, our, uh, our criteria uh, so in this in this case i have created um, a table with uh, orders uh, customer orders so it has uh, some uh, some values uh, with uh, string strings and uh, integers pack numbers etc um, here we can see how uh, the uh, max values are uh, are defined and are calculated uh, the same goes with uh, minimum values, of course. We will see it in a minute in uh, in the debugger. Uh, you can find minimum quantity, which is uh, integer, minimum price, uh, earliest date, and uh, and another thing that I wanted to show you, and it's very interesting. You can um, uh, uh, find um, you can define uh, booleans uh, with uh, with the reduce. You can um, uh, compare or uh, search even a table for uh, for some value. Let's say that we want to to, to search for um, a specific name. Uh, we could iterate the table with the reduce instead of uh, looking for it within a loop, and um, uh, come to know here um, here we wanted to know if all the um, if all the lines uh, in the table have uh, company code, uh, this, this specific company code, and uh, this is one way to do it. Uh, so in every iteration, it checks if the um, um, if, if company code is this is this specific one, and uh, it uh, keeps with uh, the help of XSD bool function um, the last. Uh, the last value of, of the boolean. Uh, other than that, of course, you will know the reduce uh, can help you to, to calculate uh, totals um, with uh, prices or um, uh, you know pack numbers or uh, integers. This is something common. I just uh, added this as a reference. Um, string manipulations other than that, uh, you can um, um, Add the strings and uh, uh, con construct spe especially strings uh, based on some criteria we would like. And here I would uh, uh, gather up all the names that uh, have uh, due uh, that their uh, order is due. And of course, um, the most interesting is the combination of uh, of the reduce usages, um, where you can. Uh, Construct um, a specific uh, when you can gather specific data with uh, the, the string and calculation. For example, um, you will do that with the help of uh, for groups, for groups of, and uh, you will group by. You will calculate uh, within the group by. And uh, then after the calculation, you present, you, you gather all the data in, in a string. Um, in um, another, another combination is a Boolean and uh, calculation all together. And uh, where, in, again, we, we use the for groups. Um, to for groups and to group by to um, find uh, the, the the values that we want and uh, compare them later on with uh, with the use of the boolean like we did in this in the in the simpler example here um, above. So let's check with the debugger the. The values for the for the reduce 
operator. Um, so we will see that uh, it, it finds out that the minimum quantity from all orders are, is, is one in our table. And uh, of course it is. Um, or the max quantity is the same principle, uh, the latest date in the table. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not iterating in, in each one of these, but uh, you will have a chance to uh, to to get to to check it because I will I'm gonna share every everything every line of code that I'm uh, presenting. Um, the, the, here it has it has found that uh, all all uh, orders are for company code for this specific company code, and um, other than that, they, they it has. Um, calculated the total orders or the total items and the total sales. Um, it has constructed our uh, overdue clients in, in a single string. For, uh, for a string and calculation altogether, um, it has uh, found out that each client uh, has uh, this amount. For example, for this client, this, this is the amount uh, for, for all of his uh, orders. And he has constructed a, um, a string that uh, showcases all the clients together. So this was about the reduce uh, operator. Uh, let's go to, to the value. Uh, most of you will have already seen uh, the, the value operator in action. I wanted to share uh, some more complex uh, examples from the value operator, where uh, we group uh, our orders uh, per client here. And um, I'm sorry. And uh, then uh, uh, with the help of the reduce uh, operator, which is used in inside the uh, in, in 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 a local scope uh, variable, in two local scope variables actually, and um, it calculates uh, price and quantity per client, and then uh, all the other data for for the client is uh, is the same actually. So we what we want to do here is to reduce uh, the lines of the of our table in uh, unique uh, client uh, in unique client lines where uh, we will have gathered uh, all the price and all the quantity that they have ordered. Um, a simple one, but uh, I find it very handy once I, I get to know with it. Uh, a simple one feature is that uh, you can avoid the line not found exception with uh, optional uh, uh, parameter within, within uh, the value uh, uh, constructor. So other, uh, although this order number does not exist, it will not uh, throw an exception, just the, our, um, uh, our uh, structure will be our uh, variable. This, this should be like this. Our variable would be um, empty, just be null or zero. You can iterate in, um, in, in, within, the, within the operator, uh, within the value operator, you can iterate not only with um, internal tables or, um, um, uh, you know, or with um, integers, you can iterate with dates as well. And uh, you can um, uh, gather uh, all the dates that, uh, for, for this specific example, I have gathered all the dates between the first and the last, uh, um, order, and uh, you can uh, advance with with the iterations uh, by adding just months with this uh, tool. Um, another concept that I wanted to to share with you is um, 
the, the use of, um, of ABAP commands and uh, features within constructors with the help of functional methods. Um, this, help, this has helped me a lot to reduce my, my code and um, uh, advance with the constructor uh, concept. So in this particular case, I use, uh, if you want, I don't know why, why you won't do that, but if you wanted uh, the names of the clients uh, without uh, spaces, of course, it is not useful, but uh, uh, you could do that for any other string. Um, you can construct uh, a new table with the value operator and um, with the use of uh, a functional uh, method. Let, let me open it. It is very simple. It just does, it does uh, this. Uh, the, it, does, it just condenses the, the string with a well-known uh, ABAP statement, but uh, it does it in, in a method scope. So you can use it in the constructor, within the constructor. Otherwise, you had to, uh, in order to use it, you will have to loop and uh, do this within the loop. So um, basically, this is the this uh, table will be the same with uh, the original one, uh, with with the only difference that the names will not have uh, spaces in between. Um, another use of functional methods is uh, when we, when you want to use um, um, uh, dynamic types for etc. Normally, we, if we want to iterate within the within the uh, value operator, value uh, constructor, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to iterate um, in a, a through one um, structure, uh, you couldn't do it. You you should um, use a loop and um, field symbols logic and etc. So you would you would do it with um, with the use of, uh, uh, of this class and the get components method. But if you, um, uh, I have constructed this, uh, this, uh, this simple functional method, which um, of course it uses uh, the aforementioned uh, class uh, in order to iterate and store in a table all the, um, all the data from the structure uh, in, a, in, a, in a field in a field value uh, format. Uh, so this way we can have access both in the value of the of the structure and the name of the of the field. Uh, for for example, here I have created um, an. Uh, imaginary input from the from a user uh, well of course we don't know what the input is and, um, and we want to to exclude all the clients that uh, have uh, these specific uh, attributes uh, when the name is this or this one or the order number is this uh, or um, or whether it is a new client and um, we, we couldn't we couldn't do that um, within the uh, value uh, structure within the value uh, con constructor uh, with our normal uh, ABAP uh, utilities and uh, functionalities. So uh, this was about uh, the constructors. Uh, other than that, I would like to show you some um, some other tools. Um, Let me find the. Um, I have uh, I have come to know that um, if you want to to build uh, the, to build the uh, dynamic uh, components and dynamic structures, uh, you will have to do many things, uh, you know, iteratively again and again and again. So I've created my own tools for uh, handling um, 
for specific uh, dynamic uh, typing operations, such as to remove uh, specific fields. Um, to, to remove uh, the, the, the tool accepts any um, any source for whether it is a, a table or it is um, a, a structure or or even if it is a, a, a database uh, a, you know um, a dictionary structure so it uh, gets the structure from the source and um, other than that it uh, uh, removes all the fields given, or if uh, there is a specific uh, um, keyword like a packed or non-packed, it uh, removes all the amounts or non-amount fields. And uh, you, can, you can use it to create um, dynamic uh, structures. And the same goes with um, it's it's mostly the same. It goes it is uh, to, to, add, to add fields if you want to, for a given structure dynamic of course one uh, you define some fields you want to add and uh, and the type of them it defaults to to string if you don't define the type uh, and this one has uh, helped me create um, some. Um, uh, so, some programs in within the ABAP scope and uh, handle the dynamic uh, components of them. So, um, I, oh, sorry, yes. I want to show you another uh, tool from um, because I, which I borrowed as a concept from another language. It's uh, from uh, PHP. Uh, I used to use uh, PHP in the past. Uh, I used to program in PHP. So uh, PHP has um, a lot of uh, string manipulating uh, functions, and um, they have uh, one that uh, uh, they have a set of functions which co which is called uh, implode and explode. Which, uh, if you have guessed it. Uh, they take a, a string as a parameter and they break it into a given uh, into, into, into given uh, delimiter. So I have created a similar um, um, method in uh, in ABAP, which is uh, which, which takes the string as a parameter and creates a range. And um, it has helped me in in uh, my uh, development process in order to iterate through known uh, strings or known field names. Um, let's see an example here. <clears throat> um, maybe I have created Two, two methods, one converts it to range and not another to table. And of course, the, the backwards compatibility from uh, the backwards functionality from uh, range and from table it takes the, uh, the range and uh, constructs a string. So let me check that. So here in this uh, specific uh, example, I wanted, um, I have created, um, some of the code is missing. I have created uh, some um, uh, base uh, structures, some base types, which I wanted to combine later on in order to create more, more complex uh, types. And um, 
these were fixed. The, this would be normally uh, declared here. Um, and so I wanted to iterate uh, through the uh, static through the static parts, and uh, this would be the, the way to do it. So um, create um, looping um, immediately to the result of the functional method, and then uh, using in the loop uh, it's uh, one of these uh, strings. Um, uh, you will notice that uh, I'm using it in the, within the loop uh, scope because um, yeah, we can do that because uh, it cannot uh, it, it cons uh, the, um, uh, in the runtime it will be constructed once and then it will uh, loop each and every time. Um, it, it's not the same with the range uh, which I uh, which I use uh, mo mostly for uh, loops. Um, if I say a loop at uh, something. Where in uh, in in the in the range I can use you cannot use it there because um, it will construct and will go every time in every loop in the method. So you would want to define the range before the loop and uh, and then go on from there. So these are some uh, some tools that I have uh, built in um, in uh, within the above scope. Uh, uh, there are many more. You will find them in the um, uh, in the code that I will share with you. Um, I would just like to make uh, a couple of references. Um, I have created this tool uh, which um, formats, which um, basically handles the, um, uh, the the formatting from input or output uh, data. To, to one another and uh, you know it uh, replaces uh, amounts or uh, converts them to ABAP format or dates or even uh, dictionary types and um, I have used it to to create the tables or uh, the tables map tool which um, basically what it does it is to um, convert a, a, a whole table of uh, data uh, into a inner or out uh, formats. Uh, another tool that I want to share with you is um, a file, an Excel file handling one. Um, I wanted um, for a for a project. I wanted to uh, mark uh, an Excel file with some data. So I so I know that uh, this Excel was downloaded from this uh, from the specific program, but I didn't want uh, the user to to see or to 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 have the ability to change this data. So um, uh, it can be done for a specific uh, Excel format. Um, you can uh, go inside the XML of the within the above scope. You can go inside the XML of the um, Excel file and um, tweak your uh, properties there and add some uh, some values that uh, you would like to to know if the, the file is uploaded again and you will know that this file was uh, uploaded was created by your program um, like an ID or uh, or something else so um, this was the, these were the features that um, I liked most uh, in ABAP, so it made me be interested more in the in the language. But but uh, as you know, uh, ABAP is uh, evolving. It is not uh, just uh, um, uh, just in the in the ABAP scope anymore. Uh, we have the MDP and CDS and um, uh, code, code push down. So naturally, as, a de as developers, we want to evolve with, with uh, the language. And um, my main concern was that uh, I had um, many repetitive, repetitive tasks uh, which uh, were um, around the uh, ALV and uh, the presentation layer. So it was every, every time the same. And um, I, I have created the I call it um, ABAP MVC, but it is not an MVC actually. 
Uh, it follows some principles from MVC, but um, mainly it is an LV wrapper, which um, um, which helps you uh, create uh, ALVs uh, uh, out of the box. You just provide some settings and um, provide uh, the data and it will display them. Um, so the, um, the, the, the views and the, the controller settings can be handled as data and kept inside the program, such as the titles of the, you know, Maybe this is this is all DABA, but uh, and will be deprecated sometime uh, in the future. But until then, we have to make our work uh, fun. And uh, of course, uh, following this uh, separation of concerns principle uh, with the help of uh, the MVC uh, pattern, um, I managed to separate within the ABAP scope um, the the data. Um, the data handling uh, objects. So now, when I develop a program uh, in the in uh, in the RP, uh, all the views or the or the controlling functions are separate are completely separate from the data uh, functions, uh, which are shared by the model uh, by by model class. Uh, of course, it can be uh, an, on OpenSQL, but my main uh, uh, focus was uh, to create uh, AMDP classes, which can be, which can, which can serve as, um, as as model providers. So I'm going to share a, 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 a class, an AMDP class for with you. Um, so uh, this this class um, is. Um, it, it is it is complete. It uh, delivers a, a result that can be uh, sent to anywhere. So even if the client doesn't want to to consume uh, uh, Fiori yet and would like to stick to the ERP side, um, in the future, when sometime he will be obliged to do so, uh, the. Um, the application would still be relevant. We would just uh, throw away the MVC and the, all the other uh, view and controlling uh, objects, and uh, we plug the, um, the model class. We, we plug it with um, with newer uh, uh, technologies in order to expose it to uh, to, the, to the new front end. So. Um, here I have created some models. Um, the, the, you know, uh, in the object-oriented world, it is um, uh, you, you will have to um, define some um, uh, uh, to, to to define some. Uh, uh, how may I say it? How may I put it? Uh, to define some. Um, uh, Patterns that we want to, uh, that we would want to use uh, each time, and uh, you, do, you would have some standards of your own. Of course, you can uh, benefit from the community, from clean ABAP or uh, uh, or, or other uh, sources, and um, you will uh, this way you would be you would be more productive. Uh, for me, I have um, standardized my my coding with um, with the modeling models. Uh, these are my models. So, and each model is, is the data that the user will have to consume, to see, to iterate, or, or etc. These are the actual models. Uh, these are um, just helpers, helper structures which uh, help to create the models. And um, uh, this is a standard um, a standard structure for me in every basically every. Uh, project that I do, it, it is the input, and um, I have another one which is, was not needed here. Uh, input and check uh, models um, structures. I'm sorry, which uh, help me to uh, have um, a better control over the input and um, and uh, checking uh, of uh, specific flags in a global scope. So this um, uh, this uh, this um, class here 
creates uh, has every has one uh, method for each uh, model. It creates the model, and uh, of course, all all the methods that uh, are uh, are interacting with the database are uh, uh, AMDP methods. Are data are database procedures, so they interact with the database and they provide um, they return a, a specific uh, data set. Uh, all the all the methods uh, except one, which is a, a method to consume by to to be to 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 run into an ABAP environment and and uh, handle which uh, model will be presented in a, in a dynamic way. Um, yes, I, I, I know that uh, most times dynamic uh, ABAP and, uh, and AMDP that doesn't mix well, but um, don't worry here, um, uh, it is not, um, they, they are not mixed here. Uh, we, are, we just choose in a dynamic manner which AMDP uh, will be used. Um, let me show you the, the program as well. <clears throat> so in the start of uh, in the start of selection, we we just call the, the get data method, the, the method we saw before, this one. And in, within the, the get data method, uh, the AMDP model that is to be used uh, is, uh, is chosen. So uh, to wrap it up, um, I will share with you some uh, links from uh, where you can find for some uh, repository links when you can find all the code that we have discussed today and uh, many, many more uh, other than that. And uh, of course, the examples that I showed you. Um, so, um, of course, ABAP. Um, has future. It is not, uh, as we said in the beginning, it is not an old language. It is evolving. Uh, it has a great community. SAP is totally behind it. Uh, so everything that uh, you want to, uh, to to become as a developer, you can you can do it within the ABAP scope. You can uh, check out uh, all the, the great sessions about the future of ABAP uh, in this um, in this event, um, uh, even in the TechEd, uh, in the SAP TechEd uh, uh, conference, they uh, Jürgen Müller told about told us about the ABAP uh, cloud and the future of ABAP. So I would be glad to to hear about uh, new people coming into into the, into our world as I came uh, three years ago and uh, come to, uh, to the understanding uh, that uh, indeed ABAB is awesome.